Welcome to another edition of the official Jets podcast. If you're watching, you can see on the screen that we're joined by a very special guest, CJ Mosley on the podcast. CJ, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, you know, I, I want to bring, I want to start with this, CJ. When you were speaking to the media the other week, I couldn't help but notice just how happy you seem to be back in the building around your teammates and coaches. But in your own words, you know, what's it like for you to be back playing football? Um, it's a breath of fresh air. That's the best way to put it. Um, just like I said before, I was just happy to be back in the building, happy to be back with teammates, be in the locker room, just to be around the, you know, the new energy. Um, I just feel like, you know, the, what we're doing right now is building a great foundation, something that we can um, build this team and sit this team on and try to stack up wins and, you know, get to where we all want to go. Why do you see that already? You said – what you're doing is building a great foundation. What do you like about what's in place here? Uh, well, one, we're still in a unique situation. You know, um, a lot of players, a lot of teams, you know, had the option, you know, not to come here for our, for our virtual um, OTAs, virtual offseason program, and that was kind of, that was kind of the case as far as phase one, phase two. But you know, as soon as we got to OTAs, you know, I would say more than 90, 95 percent of, of the team showed up and they showed up ready to work. You know, they, they didn't come in complaining. They came in with a positive mindset. Coaches as well. You know, they came in with a positive mindset, you know, eager, eager to learn from the players, players eager to learn from the coaches, learn a new system. And because, you know, everybody came here to win. You know, we didn't we didn't come to the Jets just to be on the Jets, just to be in the NFL. We came here to win. And that's been the mindset from day one. I feel since I met you know every coach in the building. And from all the new players that came um, the past year and that came this year, you know, they've been putting in great work as well. So it's just exciting to see, it's exciting to be a part of. And, you know, we just got to see see what see what's to come when um, training camps come. You know, CJ, in 2009 or 2020, my years are getting all jumbled together yeah. here. But when, when you decided to opt out and you, you were talking to the media about your workout regimen and how you're trying to keep up, can you talk us through how you, in fact, sh stayed in shape and were you at home? Did you go to Tuscaloosa? Was it a mix of both? I'm just curious what that was like for you. Yeah, it was a mix of both. Um, majority of Tuscaloosa because when I opted out, I was I was up here um, doing – well, before I opted out, I was doing my rehab here. And after I opted out, I went back to Tuscaloosa to finish my rehab in um, Tuscaloosa and in Birmingham, you know, with the uh, training staff at, at the um, University of Alabama and with um, Dr. Andrews and, and um, um, Kevin and his staff in, in Birmingham. So it was a little bit of both during the season. That's that's mainly where I was during my rehab. And as far as the workouts, um, at the time, our, our strength and conditioning um, staff, we had a program on the app that we used. So I, I just kept up and with the conditioning and, and the lift weight uh, weight lifting that we did um, throughout the season. So I, I, you know, I talked to those guys to make sure I was still you know, keeping my body in shape, still doing some of the, some of the workouts that you know, that the team was doing so I could, you know, just physically still be active and doing the right things. Robert Sala was clear about it, CJ. He said number 57 can fit in any system. But for you, what does it mean transitioning from the 3-4 to 4-3 overall? Um, it's, it's not too much of a difference, honestly. Uh, like like I said before and like I'll say every time when, it, when that question comes up, um, and when you're in the defense, You'll be in a three four, you'll be in a four three, uh, three three five, whatever, whatever number or combination you want to put. At some point you'll be in that defense. So at the end of the day, man, it's just about, you know, knowing your job and doing your job to, you know, to the highest expectation. So no matter where you're on the field or what kind of defenses you're in, that's that's what it's all about. With that being said, what do you think about the new verbiage? Because you are central command. You are the Mike linebacker. Uh the verbiage's been well. Uh they haven't they haven't put too much on our plate where we get overwhelmed and they haven't, I would say they haven't, I'm trying to think of the right way to say it, but let's, let's just say it's, it's a good median, you know, it's, okay. it's enough where you need, it's enough where you need to, you know, pay attention and know your details, but it's not too much where you get overwhelmed and, you know, have to be thinking about four or five, six different things instead of lining up and play football. So I think the biggest difference in this defense that I've been in as far as others is just, it's more, it's more technique, 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 Playing it every down, technique, technique, technique. Starting to, instead of learning, you know, fifteen different plays or or having so many plays for one call or different formations like that. It's just you get your call, you see what you got to do, go play football. So I think that's the that's that's been one of the coolest thing in this defense. Just being able to line up, know your job, and just you know, and be who you are. I feel like this defense each 
every individual on defense, every 11 players can put in their own personality, their own play style in this defense. CJ, you've been in the league since 2014. You've been a part of two different organizations. I'm curious, what are your initial thoughts on the new, I guess, uh, what is it, the strength and performance staff? Because we're watching you on the field, the entire team warm up, and it's a much different activation period. So I'm just curious, not only on the field, but behind closed doors, what is it like being a part of that program? Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's cool to see to see everybody work together from the coaches, from the training staff to the strength conditioning. It, it, we're all on one program. That's kind of been the motto of um, of the new staff coming in, making sure everybody's on the same page so each player can get the, the help and attention that they need at whatever that or oh, whatever they need. And a lot of the drills and workouts that we do translate to the movement that we do on the football field. So that's that's definitely been a cool thing to be a part of. What do you think about the leadership structure here in place? You've known Joe Douglas for a long time, but Sala comes in and he seems like a CJ Mosley type guy, meaning he's a teacher and he's going to show emotion, but he's not going to show emotion getting after guys, but celebrating with them. Everything is all about positive energy, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, when he came in, that's one of the, that's one of the first things that you can feel, just the positivity, the eagerness to win, the eagerness to learn. And the eagerness to be around the players, you know, that's and that's what it's been about this whole this whole offseason program. You know, a lot of new faces, a lot of new a new uh, pieces of the puzzle coming in. And we I think that as a collective group, we've, we've done a great job of, um, of trying to of trying to get as much work as we can. And, you know, an hour that allowed in, these, in this offseason program. CJ, what do you think about the linebackers room? Not only next to you, Jared Davis, but a pair of rookies and Hamza Nasruddin and Jamie and Sherwood who played safety in college and now are transitioning to where you play more closer to the box. I feel like we have a lot of raw talent in our, in our linebacker room. And um, back to what I said, as far as our defense, it allows, you know, a player of, of, of my, of my um, gratitude, a player like JD that's been in the league for a long time, where we don't have to really change up what we've, what we've grown accustomed to um, as far as our, as far as our mannerism, as far as playing in the NFL, but you take a um, a group of you know young guys coming in, you know two two three year veteran, four year veterans, or rookies in, in our case, and you can mold you can mold them and and kind of still instead of like changing their play style, it just fits right into the defense. Um, like I said, it's just all about like our technique and different ways we see plays that like that we're not too much accustomed to. Far as I would say, me and JD. Uh, where it's saying just as far as our normal, you know, linebacker adjustments, thing like that. But it's just it's just real cool just to be a part of a part of a defense, part of a linebacker group that's uh, that can just adjust and you know learn from each other. So I, I feel more so now than ever that you know with with our young linebacker core that you know the mentor role is at a is at a high level because you're only good as your weakest man. And you know if if you're two, three linebackers are, you know, doing everything they can. And the guys that aren't playing, you know, aren't getting it, aren't, you know, doing the right things, then, you know, that that doesn't doesn't look good on the whole linebacker room. So I feel like our, our linebacker um, group is um, young, not as experienced as far as a core group, but we got so much talent, so much raw talent that, man, we can we can be, we can be um, BMF as, as what we call ourselves, as what we say when we break it down. So we'll, we'll let y'all figure it out. We'll let our play do the talking so y'all can determine <laughs> what that means. How, how excited are you to play behind that defensive line? Quinton Williams came into his own last season. Joe Douglas added Sheldon Rankins and free agency. Full Lorenzo Fadakasi amongst those players on the interior. And then on the outside, Carl Lawson comes on board. Vinny Curry as well. It seems like you have... A lot of numbers up front, but a lot of front line talent along that defensive line as well. Yeah, um, a lot of disruption. Um, the best way to put it is attack. You know, we're gonna have we're gonna have guys coming off the ball, uh, whether it's run, pass, or anything between attacking and you know trying to get penetration. So that's just gonna you know ease our job as linebackers even more once they're getting penetration. And you know, once we start playing with the league, you know, we can we can really let our guys go. Um, you know, on the line of scrimmage so we can so we can do what we can in the back end, you know, to make big plays. CJ, I have a non-football related question for you. You had told me a couple of years ago when we did a 40 yard stroll that uh <laughs> that your car was stolen in high school, like from your front lawn or something. I just want you to tell the story again so we can hear it from you from you and we get it to a different audience here. 
Yeah. Um, so my dad got me um, an 85 convertible red Mustang. So in Alabama, you can have your permit at 15. You get your drive license at 16. So I walk, I walk, I get back home from school one day. So the car's not there. I'm like, all right. I mean, it's close to my birthday. So it mustn't be like a surprise. Like, oh, you know, happy birthday. Here's your first car. But it just never showed up. So <laughs> that was, yeah, that was my first um, car theft. So I, I, I guess that's what happened. I hope that's what happened. So we're good now. I got a, I got a couple cars in the garage. So we, it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. What's your favorite car right now? Uh, my favorite, my favorite car is um my R8. It's, it's funny how how I got to that. Um, I was playing um, uh, Horizon Two, I think at the time, and I was and I and I picked the the Audi R8, and I was just winning all my races online and just playing around. Like, man, this car is, this car handles pretty good. So I, I looked into <laughs> it. I looked into it. It was I fell in love with it. So yeah, that's that's definitely my favorite car. On a serious note, do you think people are sleeping on C.J. Mosley because they haven't seen you much the past two seasons? I think when people talk about the Jets right now, they're kind of overlooking what a force you can be on the field. And you even mentioned it yourself, that game in 2019 against the Bills, one of the best individual defensive performances I've ever seen. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a bunch of words you can – you can add to that, overlook, overshadow, da da da. I mean, at the end of the day, do do I does it affect me that much? Not really, because I mean, I know I know the work I put in the past two years. I know the work I put in 2019 just to try to make it back for you know that second game. And um, I know when I when I do things the right way, and I know the work I put in, I don't I don't have too much self doubt. So only thing I have to prove is me getting on the field and making the plays and you know staying healthy, because um. Athlete's worst enemy is is time and injury, and you know the time's going to run out for everybody. And injuries is always a hundred percent. So, so for me, I just got to control what I control, what I can control, and that's me coming to work every day with a positive mindset and me trying to lead, um, be one of the leaders on this team, one of the leaders on the defense, and in our linebacker room, and you know, just let the rest let the rest speak for itself. All right, the final question here: How many cars do you have, and what is one car you do not have that you would like to one day own? Um, I have four cars right now. Um, uh, far as far as what what I want to own, I haven't really. I think I'm good. I'm think I'm good on what I have right now. Maybe once I retire, I might think of something else. But as of now, I'm pretty good. I got my A and B car. You know, I got I got my nice. I got my I got my truck. If I need some some leg room, you know, obviously I got a uh, I got my sports cars. If I want to, you know, be a little fancy or take it out for a little spin, so I'm, I'm good to go. Great stuff from C.J. Mosley. Great talking to him. Uh, I, I didn't know he was a big car guy until he signed here, obviously. He's quiet, but, you know, I could see C.J. getting after it on the road. Yeah, but he's only got three or four cars he talked about, right? I right. like how he termed them. But I got my A car, my B car, my truck with the extra leg room. You know, he's got it all laid out. Uh, I was hoping he would say something like, about an American muscle car. I mean, maybe that is one of his cars, but I was hoping that he'd be like, you know what? I really want like a 1950 or 60 or 70, whatever, just something kind of different off the beaten, off the beaten path. So Bart Scott, uh, a former Baltimore Raven right. and New York jet and linebacker, linebacker. Mm-hmm. he loves cars himself and uh, himself. And he's got a ton and he's somebody we could do a deep dive on the automobiles that he's got. Bart Scott seems like someone that he would like an American muscle car. He probably has a couple. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, he would like a number of different categories. I think Bart's the kind of guy who's got a, a car for the day. Okay. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, it's my Wednesday mood today. Right. Uh, well, you said, you know. You know fr- uh, Friday's coming up. I'm going to switch it up. I, and then here's my Saturday drive. <laughs> well, you were saying about, you know, and CJ was talking about he's got A, B, yeah and I guess C and D or a and B car. And then he's got the truck and the sports car. What's Bart. Is he like a to Z or is he just like, how would you, how would you coin that? Uh, I I don't really know. We'd have to ask him, but the good news for Jets fans is that CJ Mosley's back. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. CJ Mosley. I mean, I'm glad you asked it at the end. Like, are we kind of sleeping on him and sleeping on the jets? And you online wrote that he thought or you thought he could be a potential X factor 
for not only the Jets defense for the team. And I, I agree with you completely. He's an outstanding player, you know, and, and I get the questions because he was banged up in 2019. I think 2020, that's a totally different story, but you look over the course of his career, his production speaks for itself. Four time pro bowler. And if you want to say, well, everybody makes a pro bowl nowadays. Well, then you could say that here's a guy who was a four time second team all pro player as well. So um, when he's going, he is one of the finest linebackers in the National Football League. And Salah said that he's a powerful mover. For me, he's always been such an instinctive player. We always talk about players in terms of what they can do athletically and their testing and their speed and all that stuff. 57 is just a football player. And when he's on the field, he makes it all look different. Yeah, I think even when we saw just a brief snippet in OTAs, I mean, we're on the field twice a week and there's only X amount of team periods and seven on seven periods. But in one of the red zone seven on seven drills, he almost came up with an interception, didn't he? And yeah, he, the read at Zach Wilson. I mean, we had to jump off. I wanted to ask him what he thought of the rookie quarterback who could be the opening day starter for the Jets, the 21 year old Zach Wilson. But uh, yeah, he can read it. He knows the way offenses are trying to attack. And he's an instinctive ball player who's had he. And Jared Davis talked about when you have a guy like C.J. Mosley alongside, you're drawn to him because he's a true professional and he's such inherent leadership qualities. Yeah, and Jeff Ulbricht said something along those same lines. He was talking about C.J. Mosley being an alpha, but but somebody that does it in a very reserved manner. Like guys just kind of gravitate towards him to, to use – you know, the analogy that Jared Davis used, I mean, they just kind of gravitate towards him. Everything feels a lot calmer with CJ Mosley on the field. And everyone talks about how smart of a player he is. And do you remember when CJ Mosley signed with the jets, there was an anecdote when the Ravens were playing the Bengals, they were up and CJ Mosley got hurt in the middle of the game. Then the Ravens defense started giving up points to the Bengals. And then CJ came back and, and they didn't give up any more points. You know, in a way that story is reminiscent of, C.J. Mosley's game with the Jets, his first game against the Bills, where the Jets climbed out to that lead early. C.J. Mosley was part of it. Then he gets hurt. Then the wheels started coming off, and then the Jets lost that game. Half man, half amazing. What I'll say about that game in particular, I remember saying I'd rather take the loss here opening day 2019 than win and have Mosley out a significant right. amount of games. I said that in the press box, and – uh, it's just, this is a guy who he, he, yeah, I think he can be an X factor for the defense. Um, and the transition from a three, four to a four, three, like he said, I, I don't think that's a big deal for him at all. Um, but good question by you. And that's what I wanted to get to right here is that the way he termed that linebacker group when you asked about them overall. He said a lot of raw talent. Right. Raw talent. So the athleticism and the skills there. Now, how is it going to all play out when these guys start playing? But uh, the young rookies, we're going to keep a close eye on them. And what are the Jets getting in Jared Davis after his four, first four seasons with the Detroit Lions? And we didn't talk about Blake Cashman either. No. And Blake Cashman, somebody – who I think fits the athletic profile of what Sala and Ulbrick want in their defense. But Cashman hasn't been able to stay healthy the past two seasons, his first two years in the NFL. But the book on Cashman coming out of school was speed. He's got good size. And, and you almost feel like this system would benefit him and he would be a good fit in this system along with Jared Davis and Mosley and the two rookies and Hamza Nasruddin and Jamie and Sherwood. Yeah, those are two guys I'm excited to watch in training camp. Uh, Sherwood and Nasrul Dean. Um, Nasrul Dean is so long. Yeah, he is. He is. He's, he's like freaky long. But that's the thing about Mosley. I think that was one of the questions when the Jets gave him a big contract a couple of years ago was, well, how is he in coverage? Well, he negates certain things because he can read the route concepts. And the other thing that he brings to the table, I don't know about you. Every time I'm on the field, I look at Mosley and think, wow. He's a long dude, and that yes. fits the profile 
of a linebacker in this system, the length. Right, and you think about the play that he ironically got injured on against the Bills. He was running stride for stride with John Smokey Brown. Mm -hmm. And John Brown is considered one of the fastest or one of the faster wide receivers in the league, and he was keeping up with him, and he deflected the pass, and then he limped off the field, and the rest is history there. But I think, you know, when when you were talking about looking at C.J. Mosley on the field, my first instinct when I see C.J. on the field is like, man, it's really nice to see C.J. Mosley back in the fold. Yeah, he's a stud player, you know. And, and right now you have a lot of unproven commodities. I think that talent is better on this roster. Nobody would argue against that. But if you're getting a C.J. Mosley, a prime C.J. Mosley, it's just an interesting dynamic because you would say the strength of the defense is the defensive line, and you've really loaded up on the interior in anticipation, Quinn and Williams, even though – Post minor surgery, he's got full runs of Fadakasi there. We talk about Shepard bringing the depth. Rankins is a guy who provided eight sacks for the Saints just a couple years ago. He said he's healthy and he feels better than he's felt in a long time. Well, Mosley's behind those guys, you know, so they're going to be creating a chaos up front. So what is he going to be able to do with Davis and whoever's playing alongside them? Yeah, I think it's. When, when, as we're continuing to break down what the Jets defense looks like, I feel like you get really excited, especially with Mosley in the fold, because you mentioned the depth up front. And I, I would even say there's like a part of an untapped potential up front too. When you think we had Daniel Jeremiah on the podcast of probably about a month ago, and he was talking about how he thinks Quinn and Williams could emerge as the league's second best defensive tackle mm-hmm. at, like in this season. Mm-hmm. So let's say that happens or he becomes, you know, a top five defensive tackle in the league. Think about Sheldon Rankins returning to form Carl Lawson, good pressure numbers. Now maybe with the, with the depth of the line, maybe he turns some of those pressures into sacks in this system. You really start to get excited and then if you're a linebacker, you're probably like, oh, my God, like this is going to be fantastic for me because they're going to create havoc up front and they're going to be guys that you're going to have to double team up front as well. Yeah. Not only, you, you know, it's like a pick your poison situation inside, outside. It's going to be interesting to see how it all comes together. Uh, the other key thing I think Mosley stated there, and we'll have to see how this offense develops, especially if Wilson's slinging it in week one, um, is – this defense can really be a handful if the Jets play with the lead, right? And I know they're making a transition. There are a lot of, you know, unproven commodities, as we've said, but there is more talent on the offensive side of the ball. And then what's, what Salah and Albrecht want to do is they just want to get after the quarterback, and you can do that with a lead. Yeah, I think it's this defense, like I said, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it comes together and how quickly will – each person pick it up. And right now I would think when you analyze the defense, most people would say, well, the question mark comes at corner and what, why, why would you not sign somebody? It's June 9th. As we're recording this, people are like, Oh, like, well, just pick somebody up already. Like, what are you doing? And you know, Salah's answer the other day when he was asked about it, when he said, whoever that player is, you know, is it the easy answer? Sure it is. But then that guy takes reps away from the young guys that they're trying to evaluate this time of the year. Uh, Again, the parallel for me is quarterback, not Zach Wilson, but behind him. Right. You want to get these guys reps, Mike White, James Morgan at the quarterback position. You want your young cornerbacks to get reps during the spring right now. A veteran cornerback and quarterback still could be in play for the Jets. Because they're sitting here in early June and they don't have that doesn't mean they're not going to have that in early August. Right. I was going to say there's a lot of time between <laughs> now and oh, yeah. training camp. It's going to change. Also, the other thing I, I would, I think that should be kept in mind is the veterans that a lot of fans want or you know analysts think the Jets should bring in. It's not like those guys are going to need a ton of reps to get acclimated to the system because they've seen ball. It's just the way that they other players have described learning a new system is just a little bit of a different language, right? Like, you know what everything is. You just got to learn it a little bit differently. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of time, you know, there's no need to hit the panic button. No, no. Listen, uh, change is going to be on the way in terms of additions. And that's what you do throughout the preseason. What's fascinating about the preseason this year is there's 
only three games. So how early do teams release players? A again, what you're doing is your roster, you're going to look at it. You're going to be loaded at depth at certain positions. And some of your guys are going to become available just because it becomes a numbers game. While other teams have good depth at certain positions that you need where you are going to want to add to the equation. So that's going to happen. But again, the dynamic in August has changed completely because not only when are teams releasing players, but how are they going to approach preseason games too? Yeah. It's, this is the first time I believe in NFL history, definitely since I've uh, probably since you've, you've been working in the NFL for two decades where cuts weekend is not labor day weekend it's mm -hmm. the week before right this is the first time for you for you too isn't it uh, i can't i don't even remember what st stands out to me right now is just the three games and i started to think about that green bay game how our team is going to approach that right. second preseason game is going to be like a, a third preseason game but listen i i think it's the right approach they've taken here this spring because you want to give your young guys as long as a look as possible and you mentioned before veterans especially veterans who've played in the system before they don't need as many reps okay yeah. so this roster is not finalized um by any means i think that's a good way to end this episode of the official jets podcast otas continue to roll on mini camp around the corner and then like we've said before we got a little something up our sleeves on the podcast in between the month or so between the end of mini camp and the beginning of training camp. But for now, that's all we have on this edition of the official Jets podcast.